you know, we won't go all the way back there. But w what's interesting for me is more the perceptual thing of what happens when you take a part of a complex organism, which we consider to be alive, so a mouse or a human or whatever, and, and, and re take those parts, and then as Kira was again so talking about that, in, in the sense of the fact that the animal is dead, but part of it is still alive and is being grown, this, this is the area that I'm interested in. It's kind of the, the cultural place that those things hold, as opposed to the scientific place they hold. I, I would repeat something that <laughs> I, I'm not interested in science, okay? Just make sure that you are aware of the fact science is not really what I'm interested in. I'm interested in life, I'm interested in how our cultural relationship to life are shifting. And, and that's really where the research and, and all of my work is really dealing with. Yeah? Make sense? No, I say we don't have a cultural language. So, so maybe you as a science historian, you think that you have a language that explains everything, but we as a culture, we're not as fortunate as you are in, in understanding the world in such a holistic way. Uh, so what I'm saying is that as a culture, when you're being confronted by a piece of mouse or a, or a combination of uh, mouse and human cells that are fusing together into one entity that grows within uh, this obscure environment of the techno-scientific uh, uh, kind of body, as a culture, we don't really have any way to deal with it, to engage with it. Okay, because you're a superior being, I'm sorry. You know, you're, you're, you're way above us in the evolutionary tree in the fact that you think that you understand everything. It's great, but, but I don't really think that in our case, you know, we uh, uh, kind of uh, mortals, we, we don't really have, or, you know, those of us who go to laboratories and engage with scientists are starting to accumulate some knowledge that we can describe in some way, but when you think about the people that are actually going to live with the effects of the, f of the fact that life has become a raw material to be uh, engineered and, and, and that our environment is shifting towards that, or, or kind of our made envi our environment is shifting towards the fact that life is not what we as a culture were brought up to, to, to understand. We need to develop a cultural language in order to engage with it. And I think we're still lacking that. You know, when you, when you say about reverting to mathematics, how many people in this room would be able to understand the mathematical equation that would describe that process? That's how many? So what's the point? The point is that you can't explain it. To whom? It goes, it goes to, to, to whom? It's not a matter of explaining it to the general public. It's a matter of explaining it to, uh, in, in, in a scientific vein, in a vein that captures... To, to, to a small elite group of people who are going to make the decisions on our behalf? Well, if you look at the public understanding of science, then yes, you can discuss, basically, uh, but, but how it's, you know, I think... And you can do it by all you do. You just did. I'm trying to, but I'm still, you know, when I was, when I went into this lab, the only thought of reference that I had was Blade Runner. Is that really the language that we're trying to develop? Is that really the only terms of references that we, as people who are not trained as scientists, can engage with what's happening? You know? Or, 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 or shall we let people like yourself make the decision on our behalf because you, you, you can understand the mathematical equation that would describe the process in a way that is totally abstracted? No, no, no I, I'm just trying to understand. What, what, what you're trying to tell me is that there is this abstracted language that a, a few elite people can, can understand and that's good enough for you. How many people in this room can understand the mathematical equation that describes the processes that are happening within life, within a living cell? Oh, not within life. I didn't say that the electrons are broken. Okay. For me, there is no mathematics within this chemical reaction. Mm. And a lot of people in this room can understand chemical reaction. To what extent? We're going to move on to another question. Okay. Can you take us up to the bar? Well, I think it's slightly related. Um, and I'm interested in the how you're communicating science and how it's perceived culturally. And I was interested in your comments about the informational paradigm and this tendency towards thinking about life as a code, mm. as a set of instructions. Yep. And I wanted to know, how much do you think that's still 
a do do you think that is a dominant trait within cultural perceptions about what biotechnology is? Do you think it's still a problem? And do you perceive your work and some of the other work of people like Kira or Jennifer Willett who are emphasizing materiality, are they doing something to correct what you perceive as a misperception about yeah. what life is culturally? Yeah. So, so it's a great question because most of the biologists I'm working with, they, they're aware of the fact that this is false perception. But the, the, the propaganda machine around the Human Genome Project in particular is still so effective that we find ourselves in a situation most of the public still holds this perception of, the, of that as the uh, uh, dominating paradigm in regard to life. But more scarier than that, it's the engineers who are moving into living systems are still holding this view. And those are the people who are actually pushing it the hardest. And, and that's where I find, uh, uh, you know, that's my, my other kind of crusade, is really kind of my fight against engineers, uh, besides uh, against the uh, science historians. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, what, what? <laughs> Sorry? You're a scientist, Ah, okay, you're a scientist, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, you, you know, I, I wouldn't, I try to avoid the high risk of actually saying, feeling that I've got anything that uh, would influence how people would perceive things. You know, I'm not just doing, doing a small bit, but um, it, it's part of a larger, you know, and, and that's kind of what I'm really trying to, to install is the, the, the fact that we, we need to allow a, a multiplicity of perceptions in regard to life in order for us to be able to uh, get to any, get anywhere with that and, and not allow, you know, those uh, people who are, who are driving this very simplistic and, and, and uh, view about uh, life as information to, to dominate the discourse, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that artists can play uh, too much of an important role. It, it's more of a you know personal itch that I'm scratching.